Hey you, welcome to Obsessed. Oh my God. With hate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, leave it in. Yeah. Good. Continue, sir. With Paul and Trevor, welcome to the, welcome to the Obsessed podcast, uh, where we talk about what we've been just absolutely freaking obsessed with over the past week uh, or weeks. Uh, I'm Paul. This is Trevor. Hi, Trevor. Hey, hello. And PM's also Paul. here. He talks about stuff, too. I do talk about things. Thank you. M- this mostly is his Apple pod, Vision, actually. Yeah. This is mostly his yeah. pod. Frankly. Yeah, it's really. He's the one who yeah. I need to bitch about things that I'm obsessed about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Well, Ranting. that's. That's that's what it's about. Then let's freaking hop in, dude. Let's just dive into this. Dive uh, in. This cake. Uh, PM. Oh, I'm just going to go straight into yeah, it. Lead us off. Okay. This is where you say what? Yeah, and then dude, I we're lead just you go in, in man. Um, you know? I've, I'm, well, I'm taking a break from Twitter. More coffee. That's a big one. Smart. Obsessed. Yes. Obsessed because yeah, okay. I literally am obsessed. Um, no, I'm, 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 I'm taking a break from both my accounts. And for those who don't know, I kind of run a nice micro niche celebrity account for Oregon State. Um, micro yeah, niche. That's I what love I micro to niche. As, yeah. That micro is niche. a phenomenal mm-hmm. phrase. Holy, I'm using. I that went all the to. Time. Cool. I was invited to go to a basketball game. Um, they gave me tickets behind the bench, and I got like a media pass Ooh. too. And I showed up and sat there. And the student section, mm-hmm. there was a few students who like saw me, looked at their phone, pointed at their phone, then pointed at me. And I was like, pointed at myself, and I kind of put my hands up, and they did too. So like, there was what the yeah, world? There was a lot of excitement. I took photos with people too, so it was it was really fun. But <gasps> wow! So why are you taking a step I'm back right a step now? Back. Like this sounds like it's going. No, great. I'm just taking a step back because um, I just I just I don't know. Like you like you know from like. You know, with anxiety stuff and like mental health stuff, you you you, mm. you kind of have like coping things to avoid feelings, right? Mm, yeah. And I I was yeah. starting to tell that yeah. as of late, I was avoiding things by just going to Twitter, right? Like, oh, I'll just distract myself with Twitter. And um, okay. I just was like, nope, this is a bad habit, and I'm just gonna pull away from like uh, you know for a quick second, then I'll then I'll come back. But um, yeah, I I need a good mm. week away from it. And and I'll be honest with you, I'm four days into it, I haven't thought about it once. Um, which I don't know oh, if that's nice. a good or bad thing, but um, I haven't even cared to even open it it's up. healthy. So, that's well, it's great. also not football season. So, like, you know yeah, I, mean? yeah. I know there's other sports, and like, you know, you can comment, and say, but like, yeah, I mean, you but you got your you cut your teeth in football, so yeah. you have a little space too. I mean, if that helps, I, I will guess. say like yesterday I was I was at the gym right, and um, mm-hmm. at like two thirty. Pacific and we have a bunch of TVs and I'm chatting with people and I look up and I see mass shooting at the Kansas City Chiefs parade. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah. what? Mm-hmm. I was like, what? How like when did this happen? And people were like, oh, this happened like six hours ago. And I'm like, a part of me was kind of like, thank God I'm not on Twitter because like like how often those things yeah. happen and how just sensitized you are to it. Um yeah. it was it was kind of nice not being a part of that world for a bit. Um, mm-hmm. and just not even understanding what's going on with all that. But anyways, that, that whole situation is super sad, but like, that's a prime example of like how out, like just disconnected I was completely. Like I had no idea that happened for like six hours after it happened. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, but that's, yeah. that's, that's definitely it's, one of the bigger It's nice things. to unplug yourself. Yeah. Or else you for become sure. yeah, obsessed. I constantly want to do it. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, I I like it. It's like obsessed, and then what do you do when you get obsessed? Yeah, yeah. Is there such thing as too obsessed? How do we deal with our mental health issues when we're obsessed? Yeah. When we're obsessed with our stuff. Yeah. (laughs) But what about toys? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that's what you're not going to do anymore. Is there anything you, uh, what about, uh, you know, you you said Mm -hmm. you were, you've been, you've been working. Yeah. uh, Which, you do a lot of there's things that you're really enjoying. There's there. a really cool like AI tool that I use now. Of course mm-hmm. there is. Um, okay. It's Tell it's it's it. it's for developers and developers who are listening to this podcast will know who this company is. The company is called Vercel, um, and they make okay. a, a, mm-hmm. a a framework called Next.js, which is the most popular development framework for web development. Um, and they okay. they kind of brand themselves very much like Apple, where it's like very focused on you know developer experience and you know easeability and um just just things are plug and play and and good to go but 
they came out hmm. with a tool a while ago called v0.dev. And what it is, is... Ah, uh, yes. I know, v0 right? Dev, yeah. So I'm going to try to find the best way to explain this. But when you do development, okay. um, I want you to think of development like Lego bricks, okay? And so let's say you have a brick that is like, okay, this brick is going to handle a form, right? And this brick is going mm -hmm. to handle, I don't know, like a profile. And then this brick is going okay. to handle this, this, and this. And so in, in development, that's called components. And what you want to do in good developer practice is you want to do reusable components. So you, you make a mm -hmm. blank component and you basically propagate data into those components and then you can reuse them across. And it's just a better developer experience. This, this whole concept was built by Facebook. That's why Facebook became so huge was because the framework oh, they were using was so really? revolutionary with the constant updates and the chat features that this kind of kickstarted the new wave of web development, which is called React. And Next.js is a framework of React. So every website you pretty much have ever been on besides like YouTube and Google are is pretty much a React-based framework. Um, this okay. just kind of the Never easiest way to that. do it. But okay. um, All right. so Vercel, they came out with an AI tool called v0.dev. And essentially what you do is you give it a prompt like, hey, uh, make me a landing page that focuses on, you know, a form. And it'll give you like okay. these really good styled components that you just essentially copy and paste with the uh, command into your oh, editor. So it can like build you, build you blocks. Yeah, exactly. So wow. oh, I've cool. been... There's an there's an app we're working on, and essentially, I was playing around with it today, and I was I was just absolutely in love with it because not only can you tell it what to do, but you can also edit it within that framework too, like within their um, um, application. And then you 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 simply mm -hmm. want to run line like uh, literally run a one line command in your terminal, and it just populates it in your editor, and then you're done. Nice. And so. Oh, cool. So if you like change one, right, and it's already being used in a bu different bunch of places, you built it in, it'll just update all yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. wow. Okay. And it's a, Which used to have to be done yeah. by hand. It's right? a, or, or, or with like older stuff. Yeah. I mean, I can still, I, I can do it on my own. But the reason why it's so great is because with, with web development, um, there's the, there's the web designer and there's the web developer, right? And, the designer, Most, especially as of late, thinks they want to just like it's it's just kind of this meme where design design is getting so good and so animated and so revolutionary that the web developer mm -hmm. just like sits there and goes, I can't fucking make this shit like it's just it's just not possible. <laughs> right. And so this 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 tool is great if you need to build something simple, but you're just not really good with design because um, it'll spin you up something that is like really comfortable and familiar for like most of your users and does it in a way that you can reuse it. Um, so it's a good tool. Yeah. Huh. I don't often think of Dude. those two things as being um, separate, but they obviously are. Like you yeah. have the person who builds the house and the per person who furnishes it. It is completely different. Yeah. Having a web designer that understands user experience is crucial. Um, mm -hmm. Look no further than Twitter as a reason why you need that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm. As a dumpster. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Instead, it's just a guy uh, dictating a bunch of stuff that he thinks is smart because he bought into PayPal 30 years yeah. ago. And but he's, he's, now he's, he's a genius. It's really smart. Uh, so, oh, they, that's really, dude, that's really interesting because I just like what up my brain right there was was following along because what, based on whatever, whatever program I'm using to make whatever I'm making at the time, which is right now it's Premiere. Uh, and I do, I'm noticing a lot of things I'm repeating mm -hmm. and it's just, it's templating the same way, but like they don't have their tools aren't great for that. So it's yeah. like hot keying, like like I use the tint with the reverb effect all like all the time to emphasize stupid things I say. Like it'd be cool to like drag something over that's got all that stuff. Yeah. Put it you can do like that. It's just it's yeah. it, it's just not great. It's just not a great I mean, uh it's not very intuitive. Every yet. everything you technical, see so. on like a big website, even down to the buttons. <sighs> Even down to like the styling of a photo, the um, the headers, the the mm. the footers, those are all components that are reusable. So like they mm. just make them once, and then they kind of place them where they need to place them. Um, so every, ah, everything sense. is pretty much component based architecture. That is what the modern web is. 
Um, and it's probably never going to change because that is that is a really, really easy solution for a lot of people to get. But like when you get into development, you start with like HTML, CSS and JavaScript, which I'm assuming everyone here has heard of. Right. Those are like the three yeah. pillars of web yeah. development. And anyone mm -hmm. can kind of mm -hmm. s spin up just a simple dummy website. And it's it's going to be fast and it's going to be great. But when you come to like really complex ones like, you know, Facebook or anything that you, that, that you interact with, you need a framework that can handle it. And that's where React comes in. But the way you develop it is so different from what you were learning in the in kind of the vanilla stages that it's hard for the beginner to understand it. But once you get that, they're really just like building blocks to put something together. You'll you'll never go back to like any other route because it's it's, it's just so much better. Dang. It's also just wildly efficient too when you're building massive things mm -hmm. for things to just automatically update. Because I remember, I, I honestly remember that like a vague uh, re reference to that in the social network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're like it needs to be. We have so many users that we need this to. So that's probably what they were work obviously they don't like get into the nuts and bolts because people would literally leave the movie theater but uh <laughs> it, it, it that is what they were working on like that's that's what they were all doing in that house like yeah it seems like you're like well, dude you guys have like a, it's like a social it's not that there's not that many complicated things but there is because everything's reacting to each other changing because someone else somewhere else changed something then when you have tens of thousands of users yeah. things start to get like things can't break and if they break and then you can't fix them for a long time your users are yes. gone and that's the that's the and, thing so that's that's really cool dude i i that's really well, yeah i mean glad. facebook just, just bridge the gap here trev facebook is responsible oh, yeah. for pretty much the modern internet is is a, is a good way to put it facebook that, is the reason why that makes a lot of sense we are here for that which is why everyone loved it when it was mm. you know at its peak was because it was so unique and different and the whole reason was because of react which is the framework that they built mm. um i mean facebook is the internet for some countries that is true like literally it's like their aol oh aol was how you got okay, online yeah. back in the day they had a they had a really interesting facebook. thing that i found out about about instagram where they had a problem with um justin bieber Justin Bieber changed the entire infrastructure of Instagram um, because he got okay. too many likes on photos that their, their, their databases could not handle it. And so it would reach the max capacity oh. and then start again. And that would throw everybody oh. else's likes out of sync. Because all these things have to work together. Like one, if one goes, all of it goes. Mm. And so he was getting so many that. that it threw everything out of whack. And so they had to like shut things down to accommodate for how many likes he had on on. on Is photos. this before? Yeah, this was or like after uh, Facebook acquired them. I I think it was right before it. This was like early Instagram. But um, yeah, Bam. he he was so popular that it forced them to change a lot of things for them. Wow, That's freaking nuts. Justin! Yeah, wow, what a what a great little tidbit there, uh, <laughs> dude. I, of course, I'm like I could I could learn to co shut up, Trevor. Shut no, up, you Trevor. could. Nice. Sweet heaven. If you, I mean, if, no, I know I could. I'm yeah, like, just I can't do could. it. You cannot do it. Put it on the list. Do it in ten years. Stop being weird. You have seventy. <laughs> you have so podcasts. many. You have fifteen lenses. You literally cameras. started another podcast. <laughs> that is true. Don't don't do too many hobbies. And I'm doing one live tomorrow, guys. Like my live one, my baseball one starts tomorrow. So I'm going to go from two to four. <laughs> oh, my gosh, there you man. Go. But you know what? I love it. So oh, good. Um, ooh, good. Uh, what about what any physical? Like, did you get any like did you get any new headphones or anything? Or um, like or I have the Sony's uh, the Sony there? XM whatever W thousand. I don't know why they name them like that, but it's like it's the like over the, yeah, the over ear ones. The, yeah, those are nice. Um, I, I love my Sonys. I have some older model ones. They're good. Yeah, I went between those or the AirPod Maxes, and I went with the Sonys because the, really? the AirPod Maxes the are just heavy, and they hurt after a while, and they kind of Yeah, look but if you wear them, people know that you're rich, dude. But they're kind of stupid. Yeah. They match your type of... Um, and, like, <laughs> I, I had those for a bit, and they were fine, but, like, the, the weight of these Sonys That's is, good. like, nothing. And I can leave them on for hours oh, and not yeah. have to worry about it. And and it's USB C, like it's bare minimum requirements there. Thank you, Sony. Um, yes. But I will say, like, you know, the cool thing about the Apple ones was 
I can just put them on and they just connect to every single one of my devices. Like I don't have to do anything. That is yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, you have and, to hit the yeah. Bluetooth button. And Apple knows that. that. Like that's that's what they're mm-hmm. selling. Like that little moment, <laughs> right? Um, they're aware. Yeah, they're very aware. Yeah, unless you're in your office and uh, they try to connect to five But devices. they can do that. And you're like, dude, get away from me. They can, but I'm like, I want actually the stuff to come out of my speakers and I have them hanging up. So if they get close to the wall... <laughs> Oh, interesting. They're like, we're on, we're on a head, we're on a head now. I'm like, no, you're not, you're not on a head. <laughs> we're on a head. You're on the wall. Trevor's so now I gotta like put like them back the in their case. Oh, I got um, breaking news. That the case they gave us, they give you is stupid. Oh, breaking. breaking news. Uh, the Oregon Senate committee just passed a bill to end daylight savings time. Hey, lucky. Oh, so now wow, good for you let's guys. Go. Come on, now Washington. I let's no go. No longer have to deal with that. Does it have to get approved by the House? No, or, I think this is the last step because it was trying to get approved for years now. I think this was the final one. Um, oh, there you go. Oh. So, so now it's you in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, us in Arizona. I think I think everyone's going to move to Congrats. it eventually. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Why do we do it again for farmers? We'll, well, now that I'm not playing farmers, right? What about farmers yeah. and creating more daylight out of nothing? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, Seeds. just trying to artificially create more some more time yeah. because that's what we think we can do as humans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we suck. Uh, Trevor, what are you obsessed with this week, man? What oh, you got going so on? many things, guys. So many things. <laughs> so many things. No, uh, I got a few cool things. So uh, one little piece of news. I actually got a video uh, pushed to me that is actually touching on last week's episode a little bit okay. and, uh, about the Apple Vision Pro and something that... that um, an idea that sparked in this he's he's a he, he's a you know developer himself and just a big he, unboxer guy he, he's like us he's like he would love this podcast hopefully we can reach him mm. um he uh he and i uh, i can't remember the creator's name he, i don't think he is actually he doesn't create a lot of things he just does videos every once in a while just to like hey this is interesting okay um, but he was talking about uh the intersection uh every once in a while we have these major like technological advances that uh, continue to push forward like the hockey stick or curve or whatever they, you know, the arc. guy who believes that the singularity is going to happen soon. Yeah, the arc going up to where we go. Uh, technology goes so fast that it's just begetting itself. We're getting close to like the the big one. And okay. he's like, a generative AI is big. Uh, he goes, there's trends that like are actually, they change our lives from a technical technology standpoint. And then there's things that are flashing the pan. Like he goes, I don't want to say crypto is, but like because Web3 is a viable great security yeah. i you know technology for security but mm-hmm. like we mentioned recently is like but crypto itself is like it's going to be more tempered moving forward the people are just going to be more tempered around it because we, we've learned our lesson a little bit i mean okay. it's still gonna have problems but it's just going to be what it is it's not your revolutionary because it's operating similarly to our old financial systems like it's still operating the same way kind of so and it's not immune to that so that's the problem so anyway he was like but never in the history of the human humankind has two of these technologies. Mm-hmm. So like the iPhone was a big one, having a computer. The personal computer before that was the big one. Mm-hmm. The tech bubble, or the internet was before that. And the internet's still kind of just part of these things now. It, it unlocked all the other things. It's like generative AI is very clearly, like businesses are using this behind the scenes to do crazy oh, stuff yeah. that we don't even hear about. So like yeah. it really is for uh, um, life-changing. He goes, but he goes, I think that spatial computing is the next thing but and he made the case that we made last week he was like i understand he goes the price point's kind of tough like it's not going to be like a huge consumer project product wider right away but the idea that you can move things in space around you and you don't have to have the physical objects in your in your way or moving them all the time that is a major pay point all human beings have and it will be gone Mm -hmm. and i was like that's why I said that's, don't, so like, don't like the invest whole, in monitors. I would use it as monitors. Like that's monitors. exactly what he said. That's all I'm saying. Mm. He, he's like, you yeah. don't need things You're on your stuck. desk. You can do it anywhere. Out of monitors. Um, you can be on a plane and watch a movie on a 100-foot screen. Like mm-hmm. things like that. Um, he's like, that could change lives. Yeah. Uh, that will change our life. And that with AI could be the, now two of them going together speeds it up. Well, God knows how fast. It's really exciting. It's scary a little bit, but it's also yeah. very exciting. So I was like, oh, we just talked about that. That's awesome. I would, That's cool. Uh, I would like to jump on that because because you mentioned what like yeah. like so for those that don't know, I work within the blockchain sphere. Like that's what I develop in. Most of our projects yeah. are crypto related projects, web three related projects. And um while yes, the whole industry is pretty much scammy right now, and that's that's totally fair to admit and be totally fine with it. A lot of people forget the data aspect of of the blockchain. They just they, yeah. they just think financials, right? They just think, oh, Shiba, you know, Shibu coin to the moon kind of thing, right? Mm, but but yeah. 
where I think this is going to head to, because artificial intelligence, yes, is, 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 is going to take over a lot of creative things, a lot of back end things. But at the same time, we need some way to verify whether or not this is from somebody or from like an AI source, right? And so mm-hmm. oh, yeah. databases that are centralized are mutable. And mutable is a term that means that you can manipulate them, you can change them, you can change, you know, do whatever you want to them, right? Like that's how, you know, accounts who might break rules like Donald Trump's gets banned, right? Because it's a mutable uh, data entry where essentially yeah. they can do whatever they want with that thing. When it's a decentralized system, all things are immutable. And so you cannot change it. It's permanent, right? Yeah. It's it's set in stone. And so there's 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 going to be this fascinating intersection where on the underlying side of a lot of artificial intelligence will be a blockchain layer that verifies cryptographically if what it is is coming from the actual source. And um mm. I which will be important. I, in a, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm trying to work on like a little white paper for a standard for photography where there's a tag. So the, the EIFF tags, that's what it's called, I believe. That's like the yeah. metadata tags of like date, location, size, um, name mm. and stuff like that. It would be oh, it would be okay. really good to incorporate a hash, you know, property where essentially it points to a transaction on chain that says, hey, this came from this person at this time, this location, um, verifiably can't you know alter this, so on and so forth. Because mm-hmm. then someone can go in there and be like, yep, this is a legit proof thing. Um, this isn't Donald Trump naked standing outside of a hotel. Like this is, you know, this, this, and this, right? Yeah. Um, especially with election season coming up. Like I, I, I hope all you guys are prepared yeah. for how oh, shitty yeah. this entire year is going to be with AI. My it parents is, will be yeah, fooled dude. By, yeah. it, by a deep fake. If you, will happen. if you get a phone call yes. from Joe Biden, Joe Biden <laughs> is not calling you. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to put Byron, that out there right now. Maybe, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, maybe Joe Byron. Yeah. But no, I think, I think all like I do, like that's a, a, a fantastic way to put it. Right. Like this is really the first time ever that we've had I would say three of these massive technological breakthroughs just colliding at once, right? And yeah, of course, yeah, the VCs will tell you, "Oh, this is now the next big thing." And oh, this is the next big thing. And when when in yeah. reality, yeah, cuz money. They're all the big mm-hmm. thing. They just need to be so abstracted that you never yeah. interact with them straightforward. And yeah. No, it's and so Exactly. I understand it too. Like what we're based, we're talking about the the three big things we're talking about are AI, blockchain, and virtual slash augmented reality. Right. Those are the three big things we're talking about. Am I okay? Yeah. Because I, I mean, I can't remember if I talked to you guys about this or not. I don't know that there's a way to feasibly verify AI created images uh, or videos because. I don't know how you solve the screenshot problem with that. Like, I mean, basically, if you're going to have like a, a a deep fake of like, you know, Biden or Trump doing something and your parents are like, did you just see that Biden just had a three way with Kim Jong Un? Like, no, like I did like that. That didn't happen. That's crazy. <laughs> it it, it, it might have happened. We don't know. Um, yeah. It might have, who knows, you know what I mean? But like having like the video of it or something or or the photo, I, I would use blockchain to verify that. But mm-hmm. I mean, that really is the job of quote unquote metadata, which would be attached to the photo. Which you wouldn't even like, think about. A lot of photos have metadata. Yeah. But you could strip that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and this would be, this would this wouldn't be integrated at your level. This would be integrated at mm-hmm. a core computing level. So when you do make a screenshot, what ends up happening mm-hmm. is the operating system generates that hash for you. Not not something that you do. Mm-hmm. Or like the application when you're done exporting a video will include a metadata tag on I top see. of it. Right? Like on the user side. Yeah. And and you can't remove Got it. it. Yeah, and it, which I feel like then, oh, I mean, now we're now we're knocking on the door of privacy issues of like every time I take a screenshot mm-hmm. and export that it's uh, permanently attached to like this is the IP address that yep. screenshot came from. No. Yeah. Well, the IP address feels like enough, but I don't know, I guess not, because every time you go to a website, you give it out. But yeah, and that's. And- yeah.
Yeah. Yes. But mm. the problem is, is an AI is going through this too right now. And I'm not, I'm not going to try to make this political in the slightest, but it, it's, it's, it's hard not to ignore it. Um, y- you, you kind of have a certain side, whether it's left or right. And you know, which side I'm talking about that if you use this technology, you're considered the devil, um, in, in any shape or mm. form. Right. And I think AI, there's so many, said, I just yeah. put my thumb up and then put a thumb up my video. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, speaking of AI, there you go. But like, you know, there's there's certain people that say using AI art is disrespectful to the artists and you are ruining mm-hmm. art and you are a t- terrible person and this, this and this. When in reality, they're probably using ChatGPT to write their emails and they don't even realize it. Um, and oh, mm-hmm. if you use the blockchain to, I don't know, do something with healthcare in the future, you're terrible because that transaction fee of a fraction of a fraction of a cent is just awful. And it's like we we we've now put in the stigma that any new technology is dystopian, right? That's that's the stigma yeah. we have now because we're so afraid of Wall-E, we're so afraid of iRobot, we're so afraid of all these movies that have told us we can never have these advancements because if we do, we're screwed, right? Mm-hmm. Like everything's yeah. going to shit. No, exactly. Like yeah, there yeah, was exactly. a. There was a there's a developer that I watch on on YouTube called Fireship and he's hilarious and he he essentially came to the conclusion that like if artificial intelligence will come over like basically take over do you realize they're going to go through and be like okay what's causing all these problems in the world and they're going to deduct that it's humans <laughs> and then eventually they'll be like yeah you guys yeah. are the problems and then they kind of figured this out so like I thought like that 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 is terrifying but like no, I mean we 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 seem to put this label that every new piece of technology now we didn't we didn't do this with the iPhone we didn't do this with the laptop we didn't do this with anything else but it blockchain AI spatial computing it's all dystopian and it's going to ruin the future right like mm-hmm. that's the label we immediately throw at it as as opposed of looking at it like oh blockchain actually allows you know uh, countries like colombia to actually have an equal opportunity to earn a living wage right like they they don't have to worry about their government yeah. shutting them out oh ai is actually really or good corruption be- yeah or-, or corruption right like ai is good because yeah. then the guy who's running four jobs to make his you know basically live his life can now automate tasks that free up his time or oh spatial computing is cool because who doesn't want 10 monitors right above their head, right? Like that, that that's a great solution. But no, we have to immediately default to the worst thing. Yeah, it's just, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what they were trained on. That's a good point. Yeah. They, in all of these movies, they do that. You're right. Yeah. We kind of fall short, or like they fall short of complete. Uh, machine response where they're like, yeah, humans are the problem. We must get rid of the the humans because that's the problem. But they don't ever finish the line of thought. Yeah, like, then you're going to be here? And then... You guys, yeah, we're, we, it, it, we are so far weird. away from this. Like, I give ChatGPT the most simple coding prompts and it does it wrong. And then I tell it, like, no, you're supposed to do this. And they go, oh my god, yes, you're right. I am so sorry. And then I'm like, yeah, okay, we are so, <laughs> so far away from this yeah. ever becoming a reality. Then you're like, you stupid idiot. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say, yeah, 
I will say when we get the quantum computer, when when that gets done, mm-hmm. that doesn't need um like hyper cold cooling, um, which apparently was solved this last year. When that becomes something, the one thing you should be terrified of is password protection. That is the one thing you should be scared of. Um, because oh sure it can it can it can brute force yeah it can brute force anything for you and the the issue with modern mm. computers is if you try to brute force things I think it said it would take like 400 trillion years to eventually come up with a solution for everything but with like a quantum computer mm-hmm. it can do it like in a year um and so <laughs> there there could be a serious yeah. yeah like that that is a serious worry like <laughs> that is a very very yeah, serious yeah, yeah. worry. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Obsessed. <laughs> Obsessed, dude. <laughs> Obsessed. Oh, sorry. Obsessed. Obsessed. I can't do it. I can't. Yeah, there's no. no all right. Shoot. Jeez. Amazing. <laughs> New thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man. Mm. Mhm. Sennheisers, you said, right? Oh, I'm sure. Okay, yeah. O- Oma world, I think. Oma world, yeah. They're beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Whoa. Dang. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you should definitely should. Yeah. It's a it's, it's not crazy. It's actually not that expensive for like that kind of microphone. Yeah, all things considered. Yeah. It's actually the it's actually the most budget friendly. That's that's the weird thing. <laughs> mm.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, of course. Mm, that reminds me. I need to tell you something about an, an AI product after this that you would enjoy. Oh. Mm hmm. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That's that's really cool. That's a fun feeling. <laughs> I'm excited to watch the unboxing. I want to see this thing. <laughs> Do. Um I'll have to ask the name of it, but there's a there's an AI uh, extension you can add to meetings now um, that transcribes your meetings and saves them as notes um, for you. Um, God, I'm blanking on what it's called, but but essentially when you do a Google Meet or a Zoom Meet or whatever with anybody, you can just it, bring it in there and, and it, it'll record all the notes for you. Um, so you don't have to do it. Like a GPT? Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's cool. Well, I mean, did, hey, no, I, I, I mean, we've been on a roll. It's been really fun uh, talking about this stuff. So uh, nothing crazy for me, you know, bringing it back to gaming. I've just been really having fun with Helldivers, too. That's all. Uh, great game. A lot of fun. The dopamine hits are strong and often. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. Playing with Buds, too. Playing with Buds is, is a ton of fun. Basically, um, it's like Starship Troopers esque kind of a thing. Uh, it kind of leans heavily into the whole um, um, future Earth, Earth's a conquering planet, and we have propaganda about democracy being threatened. So it's by bugs, by bugs, by machines, uh, the mech, the mech menace, we like to call them. Or the bug menace. And yeah, it's a ton of fun. The the first, the opening scene is literally just like a propaganda video. It's really funny and pretty cool. Uh, and the first people who die uh, are like this, uh, like a family. And the guy's like, the, the husband is like, no, as like a, a, a grasshopper type thing just rips his family apart. And he's like, look familiar? That was me a week ago. But I joined the army. You know, it's like it's it's funny and it's it's kind of campy and it's really cool. A lot of fun with it. Apparently. <laughs> sure. Oh, dude. Yeah. Good question. So yeah, basically, uh, uh, you can play with four up to four people, or you can play solo. You know, one, two, three, four. And um, you have this map in your ship. Everyone gets their own ship. You get to name it whatever you want within given names. Mine's called the mother of law. Uh, I like to call it the mother in law. That's just what I like to call it. And, uh, and you kind of go over this space map 
you see different planets that need to be liberated and there's a liberation percentage and it's all real time. So people who play the game with you or playing the game at the same time as you, I should say, are going to these same planets doing similar missions. And the more people are at a planet, the more literal destroyers you can see in orbit around you. So you're not necessarily playing with them, but you're playing alongside of them. And it's very cool. So you see everything happening in real time. So like when you call something down, like an airstrike, uh, a flare or a beacon gets put down, you can see that on the planet surface from your ship. So you see all these like beacons going off and, and mortars going down and, and rail guns being shot. And those are all real things happening in real time by other players. So it kind of creates this camaraderie feeling and it's just a blast. It's a ton of fun. I mean, yeah, it's. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No, exact. It renders what you're doing but it like knows what everyone else is doing. So you do see it happening kind of around you in the distance, but you are on your quadrant section of the map or of the planet. And uh, it's great. The, the dopamine hit of calling in uh, like an Eagle, which is basically just like a, like a fast mover, like a jet dropping a, a bomb uh, or an a 10 basically coming down and just sweeping the ground with 120 millimeter shells. and just blowing up a bunch of bugs is like, Oh, God, it's satisfying. Just, just get that vein ready. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Just, <laughs> it's it, upset. That's my obsessed for this week. Yeah, man. Bring it back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. i want to go pick up yeah you get like samples to increase your gear or, like uh, buy more stuff he's like i'm gonna go get the samples I'm like okay <laughs> yeah yeah she's putting stuff in her pockets <laughs> she sees the shiny yeah it's great l divers too man Oh, yeah. I'm obsessed with it. So, yeah. That's right. You did. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah! <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> that was a lot of learning. Yeah, dude. We're on Odyssey. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Upset. 